So welcome to part four, back on it. Now what I need to do before I start the bodywork, get it ready for paint, is a final bits of uh, fine tuning with the fitting. Now the first problem I've got is this here is blooming really, really tight. I mean it's it's been tight before, but I mean it's blooming touching it now. Right, so basically this needs to come down, but obviously this could come down with the brackets here but it can't come down because it's clamped here and uh, you don't want to be coming forward here because it, I mean it's, it's like five mil shy anyway each side there so what I'm thinking is the fenders here they've got four bolts along here as well as a bit bolted on down the bottom there and I think if I loosen these bolts what I might be able to do is uh, bring the fender forward the mill or so which then uh, might allow this to come forward that's one thing we've got to sort out and the other thing got to sort out is this needs to come out here so i need to build elongate the hole slightly and put in a metal bracket type thing to hold it there on both sides uh, these lights here i, I found a little metal tabs to bolt them in um, the other side's fitted this side here's just got one in because the fiberglass bit here needs a bit cutting off behind the light so that it can go on fully but that's that's a little little job with the Dremel that's not nothing major and then what I need to do here I've put a bit of tape on here because I've cut a bit too much off in this V so I need to put a bit of fiberglass on that and then sand that so that fits flush on both sides and then we need to go around the bumper, any pinholes, this that and other, put a bit of glaze in it and then sand all that down nice and smooth, then sand the bumper down with 500 and then it is ready for primer. I've just taken off the engine centre panel, headlight panel, it's there. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and loosen these, not that because it's missing on both sides so here as well and then hopefully we could possibly push this bit of the fender forward a couple of mil or so which will hopefully give the bumper a bit more maneuverability that way take a bit of tension off there which hopefully will open that gap up there but obviously when you pull that forward if you leave it bolted at the bottom it should more pivot rather than take the whole thing so it shouldn't increase this gap it just increase the gap very slightly here and that will kind of go forward and up a bit so the obvious question is the bonnet not just but why don't you move the bonnet back on its brackets well yes the answer is yes that does happen however that's what i did when i fit the kbd bumper so it's as far back as it will go so basically there's nothing left in that anyway so i have loosened up these bolts here 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 not there now what we'll try and do is pull the bumper forward with the fenders and see whether it's gonna give any movement whatsoever Pull. Either side. And pull them forward. Stick that down there. Put right, that back in. To be honest, it do not look it's gone anywhere. But I'll put the bolt back in that, put the other down, see what happens. Well, it has, I mean, it's basically almost touching, but that's what it was like with the KBD. So basically, I've got it back to how it was then. Imagine this head like panel may be slightly bigger in a stock one anyway. But yeah, I mean, that's that's probably as good as it's getting. So what I've got to do is pop the hub back up now, tighten all the wing bolts, fender bolts, whatever you want to call them. Okay, so probably spoke too soon. This gap here is 
uh, kind of increased very slightly and this gap here uh, yeah so I'm gonna um, get the hood back up and uh, move things about a bit again so I'll put the hood back up it's down again now though and I've uh, loosened up these bolts <laughs> loosened up these as well and all the fender bolts and then what we've done is we've slided the fender so that the fender sits against the headlight in the same fashion it sits against that headlight so to me that means uh, assuming the head, well, the headlight's only a one place to go because there's no adjustment on them so that means that the fronts of the fenders are in exactly the same points which means that either the bump has got to move or something else has got to move now this gap is obviously bigger on this side on the hood here uh, if we go back up here the hood here is back of that whereas if we go around here it's kind of flush of that which basically means the hood needs moving about so also notice these bolts here i had they were on slack i hadn't put them up tight and obviously when you pull them tight it does pull this bar in a little bit more which is hopefully going to pull the headlight panel down a little bit more so that might be what the problem was although this bar if you look over here it's straight and it kind of kinks out here so maybe i'll need to take that off the car and do some uh, bending so this gap here is not perfect but obviously this can be tightened up a little bit more but this here i think a little bit needs to come out of that which will allow that to go up and then when that's happened I'll just need to do a bit of touch up in there obviously this can come out here as well uh, this one's uh, slightly closer but yeah it, it needs to come out a bit down here well I think it's just not going to be perfect to be honest and I'll need to build a bit in there as well and also work on pulling that out there but what we're trying to do is get it so that this bolts up, that bolts up, that bolts up, and the same over there with nothing under any tension because tension means it's going to pull it about and potentially um, crack the paint. We don't want to be doing that, so I want it to go on a bolted situ with no tension whatsoever. So now I've uh, done that, we're going to put the headlight panel on, see how that fits, and then what we're going to do is try and straighten the bonnet up so on this side it's sitting with this line on this rubber here pretty much flush with it this side here it's two or three mil that way but then remember that little bar down there is kind of bent that way as well. well I think that's probably what's causing that so hopefully it'll fit down for now but at some point we've got to take that bar off which we'll be doing when I paint it anyway and bend it so that then hopefully that will come down so yeah, this side here, um, bonnet's it's slightly higher anyway, but yeah, there's about two, three mil gap. This side here, it's uh, almost touching, but obviously I've got a bit of move down here when I bend that bar to make up that two or three mil. So I think we'll leave that as it is for now. And then we're just gonna probably try and sort this out fact I'll leave that for now because that's something to sort out later because it does fit and that's not related to the job in hand which is getting the bumper on and painted that's another thing to sort out another day so for now what I need to do is uh, I think probably elongate these holes and put some kind of bracket in that get that fitted in fact no I'll probably sort this out here first both sides so we'll get a bumper off. Get that sorted out. Now this side here, it's kind of in the right place. It just needs um, a bit of filler putting in it. Whereas the other side, what I need to do is come further, well, come slightly deeper down here and get that down to that, I think. So I put a bit of tape on here to show where I think that should be like that. So we're going to do take the bumper off, get that like that, try it back up, 
and then when we've done that we're going to sort out these two bits here so that these sit right and then touch up the bit around the other side in the corner the v bit around that side and then it'll probably be doing some uh, body work like this for example and then just going around and finding like the imperfections like that put a bit of glaze in it and getting it all sanded smooth where well. we've done the imperfections and then sanding the whole thing down with 500 then it'll be ready for primer so to get this off take these out and then these bolts out those bolts out and the middle bolts out and we're off yeah, also what I've done is I've put these on here now so that this has got something to bolt into on this side here the amber bulb in because uh, this lamp holder here somebody soldered the bulb into it and it's also jammed in there and it turns out I think what's happened is the earth's broken inside so they've uh, run it uh, through it and soldered it direct to the lamp obviously I need to change that for an amber lamp so I've ordered one of these bulb holders off Amazon it's arrived and <laughs> these tabs here it's got four tabs on it instead of three and they're in a different place so it's uh, although the lamp will fit in it and I'll be able to wire it in it's not going to go into the clear light so we have to work something out about that and then if we go around this side not one in the bottom but this here is too big to get one in the top so I think before I take the bumper off I'm going to get a Dremel out and cut this so it's the same as over that side so that then the little flappy thing will go on and then that's done out of sight out of mind ready and then we'll get the bob pro so we come along with some tape and uh, see if you can see that probably not marked up where we've got to cut it off so that this little geezer will fit on so went in with a dremel chopped up here couldn't quite go up there because when you're up there with the blade it's very close to here and I didn't really want to damage that but if you need to take a bit off that you can do it with a file anyway this little geezer here hopefully if we can get it in so yeah what we're going to have to do is I'll just get a file and just take a little bit off that bit there so that, that pushes up so yeah we're just going to file a little bit off the top here look just a little bit corner with a little metal tab right, let's just see if that will go in and line up with a hole so yep yeah, now we've got that little geezer in there lined up with a the hole there perfect so what I've decided to do for this side is to just drop it down. So what I've done is I've loosened the bolts on here so that they're still on, so that they don't fall off, but they've given me a bit of slack. I've taken out this one, so here's the hardware for that. I've taken out that one, and uh, here's some of the hardware for that. The rest of it's down in the bottom of there somewhere. I'll have to fish that out a bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, because I've got enough room now, I've got about 30 mil there. I'm going to get the file and I'm going to file that and then I'm going to offer it back up and see how it fits and then hopefully that will be this side and hopefully I won't need to put any filler in here and then the other side I've got to take the bumper off put some filler in it then put it back on and then work on it but we'll do this side first so if we pull that up found that bolt and uh, pull that out at the same time this is uh, flat this way I need to add a little bit in there. All the bolts there and the bumper off. And we found the ones we lost as well inside the bumper. So now what we've got to do is put a little bit of filler in here, up this bit. And a little bit of filler in here, up this bit. Then offer it, uh, sand it, offer it back up. Go elongate this hole a little bit this direction as well. And uh, same over here, but close. So I put some tape on where I thought the hole was to be elongated to about three mil or so extra, 
and then I use the file to sand it away up to the tape and the same on this side but this side here <laughs> tape's come off now but this side here there weren't as much to play with but we're well we've got a little bit we we'll always put a bit extra on this edge here if we need to I suppose but yep so that's that and this one here there as well a bit more <laughs> beef in that one so we're gonna fill these little gaps in now with some uh, filler so I've uh, got tape there just to give me a guide same over that side found this line around fiberglass filler I think that'd be all right because it's a fiberglass bumper hard enough got me a little thing my bob just got from VRS in Boston where I got my paint from they give you these free if you spend shit loads of money on paint and this here frog tape case but it's plastic and I find it's a nice little thing to mix your filler on so we got some filler mixed up and I'll stick it on there and then we're going to turn that and hopefully it'll fit both sides so we've got some filler on and it's very messy it's probably a bit more than me but it doesn't matter because it's getting sanded off anyway over here as well a bit of a filler in so that will be left to harden up and then we'll sand that out so I've sanded that down there and up there with some 80 on a block. Still a bit messy on this side, but obviously we've got to make sure it fits first. And then uh, same here, messy on this side. That was uh, done the same here, look. The 80 on the block. Um, if it fits, obviously we'll tidy it up with something a bit finer to refine it. Let's see if it fits first. So this side, a bit awkward do but if you pull that up like that push that there and then this fender here obviously that will be bolted on so it comes out that fits very nice around there probably just be able to put that in place and get the camera around to it see that there's just the gel coat where you can see it through it because it's been sanded but it's actually smooth yeah, that kind of fits as good as it's getting now I think Let's go have a look at the other side. So the same again with this side, so if I push it up and hold it tight in place, you can see it's fitting nicely around there, particularly that um, that direction. This direction uh, needs to, you know, it's just, it's, I don't think it's gonna come perfect on this for a bit at all, but it's as close as it can be. Then here, if we put this here and pull this out, this bit here kind of sticks out because it doesn't follow that curve. On the other side it does, so I'm going to have to sort of do a bit of sanding around there. So all I'll do next is pull the bolts back in and uh, tighten it all back up again. And then see whether elongating this hole puts this in the right place on both sides. If it does, then the bub will come off again. And we can uh, get some, uh, well I'll say some dolphin glaze. I've got some, but I don't know where it is. So we'll get some uh, other body filler and uh, do the little dimples and sand them down and then do the bits like this, what need doing, and get it ready for primer. So we've got this side on, this uh, sits reasonably flush, the wing's actually got a bend in it, I think. Uh, this side here, I'll put the bolt in, and it's close, right? Because what the problem is, is these tabs. Because there's the gap there, it needs to sit in there, it allows it to, it kind of pull the holes in the right place, but it kind of pulls it in like that. But if I was to basically manipulate that tab so that the tab goes in like that, that should solve that. I mean, it's taking the blooming bumper off again, though. Bumper's been off more times than the blooming Love Island relationship. But this side. The tab is definitely higher, definitely needs to bend down and over. So this side, uh, yeah, as soon as you put the bolt in, it pulls it in a bit like that. But I was, so what I need to do is uh, get Bob off and manipulate these tabs a bit. So we've started it up, put the wheel on lock, and we've undone these bolts and these two bolts here. So I can pull this out the way 
Now I've got the big pliers and I'm going to try and do some manipulating with that. So what I've done is I've, uh, I've bent this down here. So when you tighten it up now, it kind of pulls the uh, bumper out. It's, uh, I mean, the ear is a little bit, it's a couple of mil out there, but it's not amazingly noticeable from a distance. So I think uh, that's probably best going to get it. And what I think I'm going to be doing anyway is getting the Z Center vent defenders. So they've got vents on here and then the better vents than the vents I've put in there because I hit that with a buffer anyway. And those vent defenders, rather than having a tab and a tab like this has, they've got a big lip all the way along. So what I could do is I could replicate that hole and that hole off the bumper. I can also put a third hole in here, right? Which basically then, because it's a tab all along and it'll sit flush with this, I can use that hole to pull this bit out. And then this is just like extra support then. And then obviously that one as well, which keeps that bit flush. So I'm getting it as good as I can, but I just want to get this painted because I am going to change the fenders anyway for the Z Center ones. So again, this side on, um, reasonably flush. Bumper's got a bit of a bend in it. Um, here, same sort of thing, couple of mil overhang there on the wing. But I said I'm gonna eventually put the uh, Z Center fenders on, which hopefully, because that's flush all along now, I'll be able to clamp it better. But I think that's probably the best it's getting. So, what we'll do is, uh, Start prepping it up ready for primer. So the next thing we need to do is get the sharpie pen and go round. Obviously we need to sand this, but that's a high spot. What we need to do is go round, look for any low spots. This is a high spot, but any low spots where we might need to put a little bit of filler in. Um, there's possibility there although that might come down there but we'll find out and there's a little dimple there so just go around and uh, mark all the low spots that we find so it just makes it easier because when you mix the filler up it's really annoying you mix it up and uh, you put fill all your holes in and this and another and then chug it away and then you find there's another fucker so if you go round first, that'll probably sand out, hopefully. You go round first and find out where all your, your weird spots are. Mm. Yep, it's a, kind of an indent where well, you need your filler. Mark them. So we've gone round, marked up the imperfections that um, this is actually just new sand in there, it's just the uh, gel coat. The imperfections, whether that be kind of high or low, really, just mark where they are. So we've got to do that. So, what we're going to do is sand that bit to start with round there, get that a bit better than that. And then uh, mix up some filler and get a little bit of 500 grit as well. And then go round and then the ones which need a bit of sanding, give a bit of sanding first. At the same time, really. And then we'll need a bit of filler on, put a bit of filler on. And then we'll go round and we'll sand the filler down. And then we'll take the bumper off. And we'll sand the whole thing with 500 ready for primer. So what I've done is just gone round this bit, basically like that. And sort of at a slight angle with an 80 grit by hand to get that smoother like that and what's happened there is we've got a little pinhole there now because there was basically nothing underneath what took off so we've got to put a little bit of filler in there go around do the same thing on the other side 
then uh, mix up the filler and then start filling all the little pinholes and whatnot. So done that side as well with the AT by hand, so all nice and smooth around there now. So all we got here is kind of a, a roughy bit here. So I'm gonna take the 80 on that one and uh, see if we can knock that down. Hopefully it will. down there just a little bit in that corner there Obviously we'll go over this or with 500 anyway to refine it so to speak but to get the, uh, the excess off which is a bit of 80 down there so what I've done here is I've just put a little cross in here that's just so I know I don't need to put any filler in there and same with this bit down here because we've uh, dealt with that with the sandpaper so this here feels like there's a ledge coming from that side on there so I just wonder if I go over with a bit of paper is that about the 80 around that area anyway, whether that's going to solve the problem rather than putting filler in. We'll try that first, I think there might be a bit of both, might be a bit of filler in that bit. So yeah, we've gone over this with the 80 up like there, and uh, it's taking most of that out. Obviously we've got to refine that now, it's for 500, and this is, obviously, this is a pinhole, so that needs a little bit of filler over it. Now this here, this one here, it's hard to tell really, it does feel higher on the top, so we'll just give it, hmm, give it that, might, that might be an end up. we'll just get a little bit of 80 over it, see what happens, if not need a bit of filler. So yeah, gone over that with the 80 and that has taken that out, so just to find that with some 500, job done. So this up here, this feels like this bit here is raised on a little lip here. So I think if we go over, over that with some more 80, we'll see whether that smooths that out before we put some filler on it. So yeah, I've gone over this with some 80 and that has taken out the little upstanding bit. So basically what you've got to do is you've got to go in the direction of the uh, shape, like that way, and then sort of that way, and a little bit like that, and uh, just shape it basically. So this here was basically excess fiberglass, so I've sanded that off with the 80, it's refining with the 500, but we've sanded the old bob with 500, same with this little bit here. These here are definitely dimples, so definitely needs filler in that. Uh, that's definitely a little pinhole, so that definitely needs filler. That's definitely a... Um, yeah, that, that one there, that might sand out, just try that. So that's sanded out. So we can go along with the uh, little black pen and say, yep, don't need to do note with that. This here, possibly the same. Yep, that's sanded out as well. Don't need to do note there. That's, uh, we'll come back to that, I think that's indented, but we might be able to sand down and round it. These here, I think these are just uh, raised bits of uh, fiberglass, we'll see. Yep, so that's sanded out. That's 
also sand it out. Not quite sure why I marked that, to be honest. So that little bit down there as well, that also flushed out with a bit of a 80 grit. So just refine that with a 500. Again, another little bit here, which is so low down, you're not going to see it anyway. But I'll just find that out with the 80, so a bit more refining with 500, and that'll be perfect too. So this bit here... I've definitely got to put some fur in there. There's, you can feel there's an indent in there, and uh, I'm going to do that off the car because <laughs> the wing's a little on the close side. However, if we come around here, other than that, all I've got to do is uh, a little pinhole there, a bit of filler, and then four little, three little dimples there, some filler, which we do that bit on the car, and we'll sand that and whatnot, take the bumper off the car then just do that little bit over there and sand that and then obviously sand it all down with 500 then ready for primer. So what I say the trick with uh, body filler is I put, put it up so it's raised up a little bit, doesn't matter because you're going to sand it down right, put it on and then kind of just walk away and then come back when it's hard, sand it down, right, kind of did there and there and there always get a bit extra somewhere else where you don't want it but then when I call top here what you do is you put it on and you think I just tweak it a little bit and put a bit more on and a bit more on and then you start dragging the shit around and that's what happens so I'm just showing you how to do for the badly because all the videos you'll normally watch will show you how to do it properly anyway get that wax set and then spend ages sanding that off also, those there are little spots of rain, and uh, you probably shouldn't put filler on when it's about the rain. But when I was putting it on, I didn't know it was about to rain. So we come along and we wet sanded. It wasn't going to be wet sanding, but the weather's pissed it down, so it's decided it's wet sanded. Wet sanded around where these dimples were with 80, so I've brought that down. That needs refining with something a bit finer, and then again with the 500 when we. Uh, do it down at 500 done the same over here and just got this bit of filler here to sand down with the 80 and then uh, we'll be refining the bits for sanded down and then sanding the whole bumper down ready for paint so using the block Every now and then we just get a bit of water and get rid of all the crap that we've produced and also off the sanding paper. There's a couple of bits uh, not going to get with block because uh, it's not going to get in there. We just have to take it off. That's the way it's going to stay, like over there. A little stray bit of filler which uh, shouldn't be there, but it was because that is what happens when you mess with filler. There's little bits of crap everywhere like that. on a block and just a uh, final tidy up. Yeah, 
So all that filler was that little bit there, look, just for that. So we're gonna get some finer paper now and refine all these bits and then we'll go over 500 over the whole lot. So what I've got here is some 180. The higher the number, the finer the grit. And just uh, going over by hand, following the contour over the areas that I've done with the 80, just to kind of refine the scratches from the 80. Right, so. So that feels a lot smoother. Leave just a little bit more in that area. Like so, and we'll stick that up there. There, because what we're going to do now is we're going to get some 320, which is even finer. And we're going to refine the 180 scratches in this area. Yeah, it's wet, so it's uh, kind of sticky. try and hold it as flat as we can. We'll find that area where we've been with the 80 and then the 180. Right, so. So that area now, we've got rid of the uh, the 80 scratches and we've got rid of the uh, 180. And we just uh, check out smooth. We put some uh, 320 in now. This is a little area we had with the 80 earlier. Not well filled, but we just uh, tidied up a, a high bit. So we'll just refine that with the 320 as well. So that's, that's kind of refined. That is. So there's that now. So obviously that's ready for going over 500. So we'll come down here now, get the uh, 180, do this little bit here, and uh, another little area around there we did as well. And then we are ready to take the bob off and do it with 500. So when head, that's all been refined now. We refined it with the uh, 180, then the 320. Same with there, same with all up there and that little bit there. Now if I remember uh, earlier on in the video, uh, there was some fully bits in there which are to sand smooth with the 80. And I'll think over that side as well. But obviously what I'm going to have to do, and uh, and uh, around here as well, just around here as well. So what I'm going to do is come along again with the 180, do that and these two bits and then refine them with the 320 again before everything's ready to refine with the 500. So all those areas like on the front here where I'd... Um, where it was basically a little bit of sunny with the 80 and I marked it with a little X with a pen to say that I'd uh, dealt with it but I've gone over that with the 320 just to refine it and if you go over it off it gets rid of your black pen which kind of acts as a guide coat to say yeah I've done that so a little bit there look just refine that with the 320 in that area so that's nice and smooth we've looked down the bottom here so there's another bit we go with the 320 until the pen disappears we know we've kind of refined that up and then just down here
320 to kind of find look and refine stuff and it's not really going to do too much in terms of shaping it so as long as you follow the contour of your hand you don't really need to block it you can't really block these kind of contour shapes anyway so it's kind of that refined just take a quick look around we'll put the filler in there but that's why we've got the bumper off We find that even better with the bump prof, so we don't need to fend to it. So I just want to kind of, uh, yes, yeah, so well done there. I miss them. I'll, I'll do that with the fender off. Do that with the fender off as well. So I'm going to leave that marked up. So that needs some filler in here and there, and a bit of filler there. But sanding that without whacking, that's going to be a bit of a problem. So we'll do that with the bumper off. So I think it's time to get bumper off again. So what I've done, rather than taking the bumper off the car just yet. I've uh, put some tape on where I don't want to get it. I also did put some tape around here, but I've peeled it off now, put the filler on. And then what I've done is I've put the filler over the, the two little dimply things there, and then there's like an indent in that way. And then uh, we'll do take the tape off now. So that was just to stop us getting any crap on the uh, paintwork, like so. And then uh, what I'll do is We'll take the uh, bumper off after dinner and we'll sand that down and whatever needs doing on the top there. This here, we'll sand it this way and then that way. We'll just knock it down with the 80, then we'll refine it with the 180, then the 320 and round the other side. Same again, put some tape on where I didn't want to get it. Put some filler on there, there's a bit more than I'd like on there, but I hate filler. But we take this tape off now. That protected uh, us from getting it on the uh, fender, wing, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to have some dinner, let that harden up, then I'll take the bumper off, and I'm going to sand these down, refine them, and then I'm going to do the whole thing in 500, and then it'll be ready for primer. So we wait for the filler to dry, we took the bumper off, it's here. So we've just got to sand down where we've done the filler, there, there, and here, and then when we've done that we'll refine it because we're going to sand that with 80, then we're going to do it with 180, then 320, and then we're going to sand the whole lot in 500. So we've sanded down all the filler bits, did it with 80, then uh, refined it with 180, then refined it again with 320. Same over this side. See, so, look, all nice and smooth now. So, we're going to get some 500. Get dust. And more dust. We're going to get some 500 and we're going to go over all of it. So, first things first, I've popped it up on a couple of cushions on its end so I don't scuff those up. And we're going to do some uh, scuffing up on the bottom because we're going to paint the bottom, not to make it look pretty, but just to protect it a bit more. So we're going to do the bottom first, so it's all scuffed up because it needs to be scuffed up for paint. Not just smooth, but it needs to be scuffed up so that the paint will actually grip the uh, material. So we're going to scuff it up with the 500 first, and then we can put it back down on the ground. It doesn't really matter if it gets scratched or whatever because you're not going to see it, but at least the paint will stick to it. And then we'll do the rest of it with 500. So I've gone over the old lot with uh, 500, gone over my hands with 500, and gone over my coat with 500 as well. And any bits where I've found a little bit of imperfections, I've gone over it with a 320 because that's a bit more abrasive, and then refine that area with the 500. So all we've got to do now is flip it on its front and get the little bits around the wheel arch line a bit there and uh, the top bits here. And uh, take that bar off and get the iron there. And then we're ready for primer. So I took the bar off and it's... Uh, back on the kbd bumper for now because the plan is once that's ready it's going in the house and uh, ready for paint when i get the chance and this will just pop back on the car just hang by that just to keep the air filter with the headlight panel as well just to keep that dry but for now now we've got the bar off and we've got the bumper this way around i'm gonna sand all the inside bit of here and all along the inside of here around there and just make sure that lip bit's done as well and then it's uh, ready for prime 
So just one more thing before we put this away to be painted, hopefully tomorrow. What I need to do is I intend to take the mesh off that, which we put back on the car to keep the car safe from getting wet in the air filter. We are going to put a few little holes in around the mouth here and the two pieces here so that I could take the mesh off that and put it on this because I've got a plan as well for the double plate. What I'm going to do is uh, mount the mesh in here then put the double plate on the mesh but right up to the top here then basically put a bolt through the mesh there and there and clamp the number plate across the back there so it'll be straight because it'll be flush with that and it'll be hidden as high up as possible and I'm going to get a slightly smaller one as well so what we've got is the drill with a little drill bit for pilot holes and somewhere I've got a slightly bigger drill bit I think I broke it though so it might be that I just do pilot holes now and then we do the other holes with some tape after it's been painted we'll see so yeah, we're going to put four holes in here, one in the middle, at the bottom, middle top, one there, one there. And now what I'll do is we'll drill a bigger later and then use a little cable tie and loop round to hold the mesh in. So there in there, what I've done is I've done the same over this side and on here I'm going to put a couple in each of the two ends and then we're going to put a couple at the top and maybe just one in the middle at the bottom so because you can't really see the top from the front of the car bottom's probably a bit more visible if you get down and have a look so we don't really want to put too many holes down there We'll just leave the middle bottom for now and uh, see if we need it later rather than drilling it and find that we don't. So, got all the holes drilled in here and I've elongated them all as well with a slightly bigger drill bit. So, one there, one down there, one there, one there, one there, one there to fit the uh, mesh in the mouth. Then we'll put the number plate in that. Then we've got four in here, one top, bottom, and two sides. Same over there. So it is technically ready for primer paint. All we've got to do is work out or build so I don't have a paint stand because last time I painted it, I put it over basically two saw horses like that. But you have to spray upwards to kind of get these bits, and then you spray crap on the ground and it gets it, it's a bit awkward. So I'd rather it be in this orientation. But I want to paint the bottom at the same time, so I've got to raise it up without anything touching the ground because that will get in the way of painting it and be able to get underneath it and tip it back very slightly. Anyway, gonna have a ponder on that because that will be in the next video when I paint it. So if you found this useful, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one of the paint video. Thank you for watching.